Do you have a, a satisfactory sense of what his strategy is when it comes to Venezuela? Well, what we all want is uh, for Venezuela to become a democracy again. And we are putting every pressure possible uh, so that that could happen. And uh, we're working together. I think uh, the more we work together, the more we coordinate, the more effective we will be. And I think what we're going to discuss uh, with uh, President Trump this evening is precisely that. How can we coordinate better our efforts? Uh, where do we put the pressure? And how can we be more effective? We all want a hopefully peaceful, democratic transition in Venezuela because uh, what is happening there is something that nobody likes. Colombia is a country that has more to win or to lose because we have 2,200 kilometers of live border. So we are the most interested in a peaceful solution for what is happening in Venezuela. There are plenty of Colombians uh, in Venezuela, Colombians who, who have passports and are in Venezuela and could come back. How big a, a concern is that to you from an economic vantage, the fact that if things deteriorate further, you could see many more Colombians coming back across the border? We are already having that problem. Many, many uh, Colombians and many Venezuelans are coming to Colombia. Uh, we are opening our arms to them. We think we have an obligation uh, to be to have a solidarity with the Venezuelans. But of course, this is a matter of concern. That's why we are so interested in solving the problem in Venezuela, because Venezuela is a very rich country. It's mm. a country that has the largest reserves of oil in the whole world, bigger than Saudi Arabia. Uh, to be uh, in this situation is really something very, very unique. Uh, and I think that the Venezuelan situation could very easily be improved if they have a, a good government. Uh, we've seen the uproar. Uh, we've seen new sanctions levied by the U.S. against Venezuela and Venezuelans associated with the president of the country. Yet things haven't changed that much. Do you have a sense of what needs to change for the situation to, to improve? In other words, when you talk to the president, when you talk to President Trump tonight, what will you advise him to do? More sanctioning still? Well, I'm, I'm going to hear what President Trump has in mind. Mm. Uh, we told President Trump that the military intervention is something that uh, was uh, not in the agenda of any country in Latin America that would create a, a, a worse situation uh, still. But uh, by putting pressure uh, in a collective way and uh, showing the Venezuelans that uh, the whole of the international community is with the Venezuelan people, and showing the regime that uh, they have no support whatsoever, this will hopefully bring a change in Venezuela. You spoke with President Trump on September the 1st, and uh, the White House issued a readout from that conversation. They said President Trump stressed the importance of Colombia doing its utmost to eliminate the production and trafficking uh, of illegal drugs. We've heard the president threaten to decertify uh, Colombia. How worried are you about that happening? Uh, has he offered you assurances here that uh, the aid is going to continue, that the U.S. has given to Colombia over these last decades? Well, the aid is, is flowing. Uh, they voted in Congress uh, a figure which is even higher than what the um, White House had uh, suggested. And uh, they know that we have been working together for 30 years and that we will continue. We need to continue to work together. There is a co-responsibility both of the consuming countries, and the U.S. is the number one consumer, and of the producing countries like Colombia, we must work together. Uh, we showed them that we are also concerned with the increase in the coca uh, cultivation, but we have for the first time, for the first time ever, an opportunity, a golden opportunity, to have a structural solution to this problem, because with the peace with the FARC, now we can go into these areas where the coca is cultivated, mm and bring the presence of the state, bring development, and bring alternative crops, permanent alternative crops. And this is working. And we have a, a dual strategy. On the one side, forced eradication. We've been increasing that uh, substantially, and it's working. And voluntary substitution, which is also working. And we, we are committed, uh, because this is for Colombia, a matter of also national security. This is the source of all our violence. Uh, the, the drug trafficking has been uh, 
terrible for Colombia. We probably are the country who has sacrificed the most in this uh, war against drugs that the world here in the United States declared more than 40 years ago and that has not been won. So we need to work together. Uh, I don't need to tell you that oil prices are very low at this point. Uh, forecasts for Colombia GDP are low as well, 1.6 percent growth projected for, for this year. Given that, what would your counsel be to the, the Bank of the Republic? Do you think they need to cut rates further yet? Well, they've been cutting rates yeah. uh, quite a bit, and, and uh, the uh, economy is starting to grow at a faster rate. I, I'm quite certain that the second semester will be much better than the first semester. We are growing at a much higher rate than the rest of Latin America. And uh, the figures of trade, of uh, the industry that were published just a couple of days ago were much more positive than we expected. So I think we, we are on the upside. Of course, uh, we need to maintain uh, the rate of investment, which is the highest in the whole of Latin America. Uh, this is very important. And fortunately, foreign investment, because of the peace, is coming in more and more. So, uh, yes, we had a, a difficult situation, not as bad as other countries, uh, but we are now on the verge of, uh, of, the, of, of accelerating the, uh, the upper trend. Something with which you've had to deal are these mini referenda around the country on oil and mining, uh, communities voting whether or not to allow projects to continue. And you talk to uh, the heads of, of big energy and production companies, and they say this is a big risk for them. What can you do to prevent those from happening, uh, to eliminate that risk that's clearly a concern for a lot of multinational companies? Yes, and it's a concern for us also, and we are going to take care of that. Uh, there is a, a vacuum in, the, in our legislation, um, and we need to clarify who has the authority uh, over certain decisions, the municipality or the national government. We are uh, putting to, to Congress a law that will uh, define that because we want certainty for investors. This is a constitutional change or just it, clarification? It's more, more of a legal change, uh -huh. not a constitutional change. Um, I wonder when, when you look at um, the, the prospects for a peace dividend, you're the winner of the, the Nobel Prize last year, you've talked about there being a, a peace dividend. Uh, there's a ceasefire now with another rebel group uh, in Colombia. Uh, there's the Caño Limón pipeline, which has been attacked I think 43 times uh, recently. When are we going to finally see that peace dividend take place? Are you confident we're going to see uh, economic effects of ceasefires like that, uh, of the reconciliation that you brokered, come to pass. When's that going to happen, do you think? Well, it's already happening. Just this morning, uh, we had a breakfast with uh, the 12 principal donors in the world for, uh, for example, the sustainable development and the environmental peace dividend. Uh, there are huge opportunities there. In the agribusiness, there's uh, millions of hectares that can be now uh, put into production in a sustainable way. Um, what we're, ha we're seeing in uh, infrastructure that before, because of the conflict, was very difficult uh, in certain regions of the world, in, the, in, the, in Colombia, now uh, they are open for business. So we are seeing uh, a, a, a trend in crescendo uh -huh. uh, in terms of the, the peace dividend. Of course, this is nothing, something that doesn't come from one day to another. This is, uh, this is a, a, a process. But for example, something that we have already seen today, tourism, the number of tourists that are going to Colombia mm. have increased dramatically. And uh, Colombia has a tremendous potential for tourism. So we are seeing uh, the, the dividend uh, appear slowly because it's a process, but it's certain.